Uh, if you want to go ahead and open up to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, we're going to be continue, continuing in our study through 1 Corinthians chapter 13. I know probably most of you heard this week about some stuff that came up with the Goose Creek High School football team this week, and it was kind of all in the paper and all in the sports page and everything. And uh, I didn't really kind of read into all the details of what was going on or why they were disqualified, but uh, uh, it turns out that something happened this past week or two where Goose Creek ended up turning themselves in for kind of an honest oversight. And uh, it turns out they had an ineligible player, and I didn't really read the details of it, but it sounds like he was kind of like a special needs guy. And it wasn't, it wasn't something that they did to gain a competitive advantage. They weren't like seeking to cut corners to win or do anything like that. And so what happened was they turned themselves in. They realized what had happened. They turned themselves in, and they ended up getting disqualified from the high school playoffs. And the big news about this is this is the number one team in the state. They're undefeated, and they're actually even ranked 12th nationally. And here they were getting disqualified after their first playoff win um, the, the Friday before, and they were being told they couldn't play or compete again in the playoffs. And there's just a, there's a big, a little bit of an uproar about it, you know. Uh, I know probably most of you felt the same way I did. It just seemed really unfair that this had happened to this team. And they didn't really do anything wrong as an honest mistake. And now the whole team had to suffer after all the hard work, all the uh, weightlifting and summer practices and all that stuff they had gone through. And they end up getting disqualified from the playoffs for something they didn't mean to do. And so, anyway, as you kind of heard, Friday morning they actually went to court over the matter, and they, I think they kind of postponed the decision and allowed Goose Creek to play. And I know if most of you were like me, you're kind of happy about it. You're like, you know what, they, they deserve to play. I know, uh, I don't know if any of y'all went to Goose Creek, but I know uh, maybe you even have hard feelings toward Goose Creek because they pummeled your alma mater. Uh, I know they actually pummeled my former high school, like 35 to 7, and I went and watched it, and it was embarrassing. And so, um, so maybe some of you felt that way about them doing the same thing to your high school. But at the end of the day, we, I think most people could have agreed that they deserved to play. You know, these kids didn't deserve to be punished over something uh, so small like that. And uh, it was kind of interesting to see that most people were happy about it. They were happy because what was right was done in this situation. And they ended up winning this past Friday and they're advancing in the playoffs and everything. Uh, in 1 Corinthians 13, this kind of resonates a little bit with what uh, 1 Corinthians 13, verse 6 talks about a little bit. And we're going to kind of get into this or dive into this verse a little bit this morning. It says, Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. So, here in this situation, what was right, what was true, what was what should have been done was done, and most people rejoiced at the fact that what was right was done. But sometimes, even as individuals, we are fallen beings. There's a reason that Jesus died uh, for the sins of the world, because we are fallen. Uh, The Bible says we all fall short of God's glory. We all fall short of God's perfection. And this verse talks about, in the first part, it says, love does not delight in evil. And sometimes, if we're honest, in our own hearts, in our own minds, we ourselves can kind of uh, delight in wrongdoing sometimes. Sometimes we can fall into some behavioral patterns, some things that we shouldn't fall into. And as a result, we're kind of, what this verse is talking about, kind of delighting in evil in our own hearts, in our own minds. And James 3, 2 says that we all stumble in many ways. Every single individual in here is very imperfect, imperfect uh, in many ways, and we fall short of God's uh, perfection. Uh, but we need to be careful in this life. We need to guard our hearts. The Bible talks about guarding our hearts above all else because from it flow the, the springs of life. But sometimes if we're not careful, we can fall into kind of a repetitive cycle uh, of destructive behavior sometimes. Sometimes it's more public. Sometimes it's something that everybody else around you can see. It's sometimes it's something that people are not ashamed about and they just participate in it and they don't really give much thought to it. And I know about a guy I went to high school with, or I'm sorry, college with. Um, in college, I was in kind of that party lifestyle a little bit, the drinking and all that stuff, the late night, hanging around in bars and that, all that stuff. 
And there was a guy I knew who was involved in that as well. And I don't know if this guy ever grew up going to church or anything like that. Um, but what happened is after college, this individual ended up kind of falling into an even more destructive pattern of behavior. And this person is actually a very successful person. Uh, he has a, a great job. I mean, this guy is just brilliant. I mean, he's a brilliant guy. Um, he has a, a great job. He has a job in which he helps a lot of people, and he will continue to help people throughout his lifestyle or throughout his lifetime. But he's actually he has fallen into a destructive pattern uh, of behavior in his life. And what happens sometimes when we fall into this uh, behavioral patterns sometimes. Sometimes we end up surrounding ourselves with other people who kind of affirm the same type of behavior, and that's what this person has done. He's uh, blatantly chose to engage in a certain style of life, and what he's done, he's surrounded other people around him who affirm that what he's doing is okay and right. And sometimes if we're not careful, we can fall into the same trap. Sometimes we can fall into these destructive behavioral patterns and what we do instead of seeking out what God wants us to do or how God wants us to live, uh, we, we start, what, what, what happens is, is when we compromise in a small way sometimes, what we can do is we can either turn to God with it, acknowledge it as wrong, or we can, if we continue doing it, over time what happens is the more and more you do something that's wrong, uh, the more hardened your heart will start to become. And I know this happened to me in my lifestyle, I made... Uh, some choices back in high school and just started off kind of small. And next thing you know, I convinced myself there's nothing wrong with what I was doing. Though deep down in the inner recesses of my heart, I knew. I knew that what I was doing was wrong. And that's the truth about God's words. That is, he says he's put a conscience inside of every human being. In other words, you can go anywhere in the world, whether someone believes in Jesus or not, and they have a conscience that has been placed inside of them according to to Romans 1, but what happens is if we continue doing something that we know we shouldn't do, um, we start to become hardened toward it and start uh, acting like it's not that big of a deal, even though deep down we know um, that God doesn't want us uh, to do certain things or live a certain way. And I know I have people who kind of I grew up with, and I'll see them now, and they're still kind of doing the same type of thing that they, they always were, the same type of stuff that I used to uh, do with them, and I don't know, maybe some of you have people like that in your lives are kind of still in the same destructive pattern of lifestyle. And uh, we need to be careful and we need to guard our hearts and guard our steps and be honest with how we're living. We need to be honest before God um, and how we're living and the lifestyle that we choose. And sometimes uh, it can become a very public thing and it's just something that other people know about. And uh, what happens is we just continue to do it if we're not careful and we're not honest before God, what happens is we start delighting in evil. Like this verse talks where we delight in what is wrong. We start convincing ourselves that something that is wrong is not wrong. And it just leads us in this path of uh, just destructive behavior sometimes. And sometimes we need to be careful as well not to get into involved in, uh, and this happens in a lot of, uh, uh, even in Christians sometimes, we can develop wrong attitudes sometimes. We can develop wrong attitudes about certain things. Sometimes it's not always blatantly wrong, sinful behavior. Sometimes it's more like a choice of attitude that we have sometimes or how we talk about other people. Uh, and I know that gossip can be a problem sometimes. We all have times in our lives where we're presented with opportunities uh, to say things about others that maybe uh, may not be the best choice of words to say about them. And I know uh, a while ago, this is about eight years or so ago, um, I had a friend that I went to college with, and uh, this guy, you know, he's just kind of a, you know, he's kind of a wild guy, and uh, I hung out with him in college and did all the same kind of stuff, but uh, anyway, after college, I heard a story about something this guy had done, and it's just like, have you ever heard a story before that someone relayed to you that was just like so outlandish, you're like, oh my goodness, and like, what, what was your immediate reaction? You immediately wanted to go tell somebody else about it. Have you ever had something like that happen where you heard something that was just so crazy, you couldn't believe it, and you just had to go and tell somebody else about that? And I heard, I heard the story of this guy had done something. This friend of mine had done something. I hadn't seen him in a couple years, and it was like a really outlandish story that I'd been, been told to me. This, so-and-so did this. Can you believe that? It was like that kind of that kind of story 
And so I had a choice in that situation of what to do with this information that I didn't really know was true, uh, but it was relayed to me in such a way that I had to believe it was true. And it was something that was not good for this guy's image. It was something that if he had done this, it wouldn't have been good for his rep reputation and his character. And so what did I do? I immediately went and told some other people. I went and told some other people, can you believe it? This guy did this. And I was like excited about it. It wasn't like, yeah, yeah this guy did that. I was like, man, you're not going to believe this. And I was like excited to like see their reaction to like what this guy had done because it was like going to be the same shock reaction um, that I had had in this situation. But uh, after a few or so days went by, after I had done this, what happens? I find out it's not true. And as a matter of fact, what, how this rumor started, and this kind of shows you the kind of people I used to hang out with, um, this rumor started by a guy who was in a bar late night, as you can imagine, and he just, this is someone I knew as well, and he just decided that night to make up the story about this guy. It wasn't like he hated the guy, it was just like some twisted joke he wanted to put on this guy, and it just got all out, and just like everybody who knew this guy heard this story, and it was just crazy, and then here I was, I found out it wasn't true. And so what had I done? I had participated in just a sleazy, trashy form of gossip and spreading something that belittled another person's character. And I honestly, I got convicted about it. Uh, I got convicted by the fact that I had participated in this and I had to go retract my story. I went and told the people that I had told, hey, that really wasn't true, but who knows how many people they had told uh, by the time I even got back the kind of trying to put out the fire that I had helped spread. We need to be careful. We need to learn to believe the best in other people sometimes. Sometimes we'll hear something about someone. Sometimes we'll hear uh, another person's character or reputation get belittled. And sometimes we need to believe the best before uh, engaging in those kind of talks. Uh, Ephesians 4.29 says, Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, needs, that it may benefit those who listen. So I want to encourage you, whether it's on the job and people get together and like to talk about other people, wherever it is, maybe in your circle of friends, they like to get together and talk about certain people. I want to encourage you to not participate in any kind of talk that maybe belittles another person's character and start believe the best about people until you find out uh, that maybe something's true that you know that kind of just goes against what that person's character stands for but the bible says to the pure all things are pure and so i want to encourage you this morning when you're presented wherever it may be in whatever situation of life you may be in if you hear something uh, that could potentially harm another person's character or integrity i want to encourage you to take the higher road and not participate, not spread something that you're not sure about whether or not it's true. And when we're presented with these kind of situations, we're presented in a situation where something may be said or something is going on or maybe there's a negative attitude or whatever it may be, we have a choice in how we can respond in the situation. And I know I was presented with a choice actually pretty recently at my other job. Um, what happened, we had a new manager come in. And so we're, we actually, as a personal trainer, we all have our own company. We have our own company. We're independent contractors. And we, as long as we kind of abide by the, the kind of the rules of the, the gym where we work, everything's, you know, we're really kind of technically we're kind of our own bosses as long as we kind of abide by the rules in the gym. And so we actually had a new manager come in. And she came in the first couple weeks. And you could just tell she wasn't like, you know, trying to, put everybody in their place. She came in with a good attitude, just trying to win people over, kind of ease, her, ease herself along into the role. And uh, she actually sent out an email, a mass email to all the trainers asking us to do something and then giving us a deadline to do it. Uh, and it was something that we weren't typically supposed to be doing. And basically she was asking us a special request of us. Hey, can you do this by such and such, such, and such a date? And uh, it was obviously something that the owner of the studio had asked her to ask us to do. Uh, and if I'm honest, was it a little bit of an inconvenience? Yeah, it was a little bit of an inconvenience. You know, it was just kind of an annoyance to have to do this, and especially by a certain date. 
But what happened is she sent out an email, a group email, to like eight or, not, I don't know, seven or eight of us. I don't even know how many people. And it was, it, she presented it well. It wasn't like some attitude or anything like that. And what happened was, the, what, what do you think the first person who responded had to say? First person who responded to the, all the, uh, keep in mind, this is group a, email, so everybody's getting all the responses. One of the trainers responded with a little bit of an attitude. It wasn't like a mean-spirited, like, you know, it was just kind of like a little bit like, I'm not going to do that. I can't do that in that amount of time. It's just kind of a little bit disrespectful. And so what do you think happened after the first kind of negative email? Then comes another one that's kind of like agreeing with that first uh, email that went out, and then another person chimes in, and they're, the, the, the next two aren't quite as firm as the first one, but they're still kind of uh, with that same aura, that same attitude. And so like six or seven emails start juggling around a little bit, and I get them, and I get my email, I open up my email, and there's like a whole list of emails, and I'm like reading through this, all this drama that's going on, and over this simple request <laughs> that had been given out. And so I had a choice in that situation. Number one, I could have joined them. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, I agree. You know, we're, we can't do that by then. There's no way. Uh, or I could have been silent. I could have been silent, just said nothing. Um, but I, I decided to do something a little bit different. I recognized the fact that this uh, manager came in. She had a good attitude about it. All she was doing was what the owner asked her to ask us to do. And so what I did, and I know all of my coworkers pretty well, and so they're not going to take anything the wrong way, but I kind of took a little bit of, of a dig at my coworkers and my response to the email. And I basically uh, was a little bit sarcastic that they had made this into such a big deal. Like, I'm like, are you kidding? It's kind of like, are you, a, are you kidding me type response. And basically, in that situation, I ended up kind of sticking up for the manager a little bit. Um, it was just kind of a subtle thing. It was a small thing. But what happened after I did that, what do you think happened to the emails after that? The next email was like a more, much more repositive Response, all because I kind of, uh, just kind of, I guess you could say kind of stood up for her. It's kind of like a, uh, just a little subtle sticking up for her. But what happened after that is I changed the tone of the attitude in that situation. And sometimes we can do the same thing. When we hear something that maybe is critical, maybe it's a gossip, maybe it's something that's belittling someone's character, we have a choice. We can take a stand for what is right if we choose to believe the best in other people. Uh, and sometimes when we, we, sometimes these type of things that we participate in or we can sometimes, they're a little more public. But other times this kind of delighting in evil that this verse is referring to <clears throat> can actually be of a more private matter. Um, ultimately, sometimes uh, the greatest areas where we fall are sometimes in the secret places of our own heart. And uh, I know this happened this can happen to any of us in many different ways. We're all weak in different areas as individuals. As we try to grow in our relationship with God, where the things that tempt me might not necessarily tempt some of you and vice versa. And we all have areas in our hearts uh, that we always need to be on guard. We can fall in, into problems in our lives. And I know this kind of happened in the life of David. We all have heard the story about David and Bathsheba. And what happened was, and it doesn't really go into the detail of all how things unfolded in this situation, but basically David was on a rooftop one night, and he saw a woman bathing. And uh, I can imagine, just kind of, kind of looking into the story a little bit, I would be willing to bet this probably wasn't the first time that David had seen this woman. I just, that's kind of my guess as to the situation. And I'd imagine it'd be, he'd probably seen her before and maybe kind of found out when she would be up there and kept kind of going back and going back and going back. And then what happened was is his lust became so strong that he actually fell into adultery and then ended up trying to cover it up and commit murder. And uh, I just wanted to give a word for the men in here this morning. Um, this is something that maybe some women deal with and maybe in a little, kind of a little bit. But uh, every man in here, there's a book actually written about this called Every Man's Battle. And this, the sexual temptations we face uh, will never stop as long as we're alive. It's just the truth of the matter of being a man. And we have to be extremely careful in these areas that can tempt us. 
Because there's always going to be temptations that, that are going to face us. And sometimes there are these things that happen inside of us in the secret places of our hearts. And if any of you in here are going through something that maybe you're struggling with, it's a private thing and it's just something you are struggling to get or to deal with or get over, I want to encourage you this morning, talk to me, talk to one of the deacons, uh, just anybody that you're comfortable with, I want to encourage you to get help. Because these type of things can continue to linger and fester. And if you don't address it and you don't deal with it and you don't uh, confront it with truth and how God wants us to live, uh, they can cause major problems later on in our lives. And the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 6, verse 18, it says to flee sexual immorality. And this is something that as men we need to continue to run and away from and to continue to guard our hearts because these things will cause problems in our life. And I want to encourage you this morning, if you're dealing something with something, please get in touch with me. Come talk to me. I'll be glad to kind of help you through the process. I know Dan and some of the other deacons will be glad uh, to work with you. But sometimes these issues of the heart can begin in a private place where only we can see what's going on. And I want to encourage you to do something about it. Don't allow it to continue in your heart. Uh, allow God to get involved. Allow people that can help you to get involved, that will pray for you and encourage you and help you in any and all situations. And what love, uh, talking about love does not delight in evil, also means that love doesn't have, true love doesn't have ill will toward other people, even if someone has done something wrong to you. It's easy to love people that love us back, but sometimes it's not easy to love people who don't necessarily uh, agree with us or don't necessarily like us. And sometimes it's difficult. Sometimes it's the most difficult thing in the world to love people who don't love us back. And sometimes what will happen in our lives and our hearts if we're not careful, someone will wrong us, and what do we want? We want, we want to see revenge happen. We want to get even with them. We want uh, to see them stumble and see something happen to them so they can experience maybe the hurt that they caused us. But the Bible says to kind of go against this. In Proverbs 24, verse 17 through 18, it says, Do not gloat when your enemy falls. When he stumbles, do not let your heart rejoice, or the Lord will see and disapprove. I know I was, uh, had an opportunity to kind of gloat in the payback of somebody in my life. It wasn't really like a hurtful thing they did. It was just kind of a thing that, I actually shared this with the congregation about a month or two ago where I was in a work situation I didn't think was fair. Uh, I was in a situation, I had a situation come up at my other job, not this one. Everything is fair and perfect here. We all know that. Um, <laughs> but uh, at my other job, something came up that I didn't think was fair, and I told you all about it a little bit. And uh, I just said, I was mad about it, and I just said how I prayed, and I told God, you know what, God, you deal with this. I just told God, I was like, God, you deal with this. I'm not going to worry about it. And so what had happened is something, a program had been put in place at my other job, just try to be as vague as possible, that caused me some issues in my job. And I wasn't happy about it. I voiced my opinion about it, but ultimately I ended up losing the battle in that situation. So I was mad about it, and I just let it go to God. Well, what happened within the last couple of weeks is the program that was implemented and then kind of falling apart. Um, and here I was just inwardly kind of recognizing, all right, God, yeah, that was unjust, and here is you getting involved and kind of uh, getting rid of the injustice, you know, paying back the injustice. And it wasn't something like I was mad at the people or anything. I mean, I'd gotten over it and everything. But what I could have done is I could have said something about it. I mean, I, I told you so. I told you that wasn't going to work. I, could, I told you uh, you shouldn't have done that. I, I had the option to do that, and it probably would have felt good to do that. But I want to encourage you this morning to not uh, fall into that trap. When you see someone who maybe has done something unfair to you, they've done something to you that may be hurtful toward you, maybe they've uh, said some negative things about you and just hurt you, I want to encourage you this morning, when you do see maybe God get involved uh, and, do, and see them struggling with the same thing they cause you to struggle through, I want to encourage you not to rejoice uh, when they're going through a hard time. The Bible says that we are not to delight in evil, but to rejoice with the truth. And let's pray this morning.
Heavenly Father, I just thank you for your constant love toward us. And I just pray that we would more and more continue to delight and rejoice in what is true and what is good. And sometimes we fall into repetitive behaviors in our lifestyle, or repetitive, destructive behaviors that can cause problems in our lives and cause others around us problems. Lord, I just pray if anybody in here is struggling through anything, whether it's a private matter or a public matter, uh, I just pray that they would uh, just seek you on it and seek your guidance so that they can be healed and move forward in their relationship with you. Lord, I also pray that we would learn to take the high road. Uh, when we're presented with opportunities to maybe uh, belittle someone else uh, and others around us are doing the same, I just pray that we would take the high road and do what is right, even when others around us are not doing what is right. And Lord, I just thank you that you are a good God. You are a God who forgives us no matter what we're doing, no matter what we're facing. You're a God who's always there to forgive us if we simply ask. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.